This is the Aula F2088 keyboard. It's super inexpensive and it has some nifty features that might make someone who's on a budget but in need of a new keyboard give it a look. And in today's video I'll be doing just that, looking at the F2088's various features and going over what I like and dislike. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Before I begin, disclaimer time. I received an email from someone at colddetector.com to do a review on this keyboard and I agreed. They sent me the F2088 for free, but beyond that I have not been paid to do this video and no one at Cold Detector or Aula gets to see this video prior to me publishing it live on YouTube. All thoughts on the Aula F2088 are my own and were influenced only by my user experience. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. The Aula F2088 is very affordable, and when this video was recorded is priced anywhere from $30 to $46. The box is a simple two-tone design, and on it is a demon or soldier looking character. The keyboard model name, a simple image of the keyboard but with different keycaps than the version you get here, and the Aula name and spider logo. On the back is a QR code that takes you to an invalid web address, but when you press OK, you're taken to the WeChat app in the App Store, at least on my iPhone at any rate. Aula's contact information and web address is also given, however the websites for Aula, both the Chinese and English versions, which are aulacn.com and aulastar.com respectively, are only semi-functional messes with no way to find more information about the F2088 as the learn more button goes nowhere. In fact, the Amazon listing has more information about this keyboard and how to use it than what I could find on either website. This is not confidence inspiring to say the least and should serve as a red flag warning when researching keyboards and other peripherals should Aula or similar budget brands come up during your search. In the box you get the keyboard wrapped in some protective bubble wrap, a magnetic wrist rest, a keycap puller, which is nice to see included with such an inexpensive keyboard, <coughs> Corsair K70 RGB Pro, where's yours? and finally an instruction booklet in both Chinese and English. It's informative and provides a good deal of information about the keyboard, how to use it, and also basic warranty information, which is 12 months. How easy it will be to take advantage of that warranty should the keyboard fail in any way in those first 12 months of use is questionable, simply based on the functionality of Aula's websites. There is a phone number on the box and booklet, but no email address. Having said that, I was fortunately able to navigate to the Contact Us page on the website where you can submit a query. One thing to note about the instruction booklet, the English translation isn't 100% the best, but you should be able to get by. Additionally, the Amazon listing contains even more information on how to operate certain keyboard functions than what is contained in the instruction booklet. This information should be readily available in the booklet and on the product support page. To me, this is not the best way to make a good impression with a buyer, especially if you want a repeat customer. It's good the Amazon listing has plenty of helpful information, but it's more important to provide that information in any documentation that comes with the product and on the product's webpage. Moving on to the keyboard itself, the Aula F2088 is a full-size keyboard with a numpad and a row of F keys at the top, as well as a function key. The frame consists of a metal top and a plastic bottom. On the bottom are two feet for height adjustment at the back and two rubber anti-slip pads at the front to keep the F2088 from unintentionally moving. There are no additional anti-slip pads on the feet or back of the keyboard. Having said that, I've had zero issues with it sliding around my desk while typing. When it comes to construction quality, I would not describe the F2088 as a tank, especially compared to more expensive keyboards. You can twist the frame if you put enough torque on it, and the keyboard does have some flex to it if you push down on it. Having said that, I didn't notice any give or structural related issues while typing, and I cannot imagine rigidity coming into play during normal use. However, if you travel a lot and put the keyboard in an already cramped backpack, you could run the risk of damaging it due to its less than adamantium-like structural integrity. The Amazon product listing describes the F2088 as a mechanical keyboard, and indeed it does have a rather audible clicky sound profile to it. If you take off a keycap, you'll see switches with blue stems, and they are compatible with Cherry MX keycaps. Unfortunately, I could not find out specifically which brand of switch Aula uses with the F2088, such as Cherry MX, KL, or Gateron. It's a little disconcerting this information isn't given. The only information provided about the switches is they are blue, typewriter-like, and they cannot be hot-swapped. With each key press, there's definitely an audible click and a tactile bump you can feel. Some people might find this keyboard entirely too loud, and if you are someone who streams or has loads of meetings and you take notes, then you'll definitely want a keyboard with a quieter sound profile.
The keycaps themselves are made of ABS plastic, they're round, and they have an old school typewriter design to them. The product listing describes them as having a retro punk feel. I'm pretty sure Aula was going for a steampunk look and I can appreciate the effort. I like the round keys, which do take some getting used to when typing and even gaming. I definitely like how the integrated lighting reflects off the shiny outer rim of each keycap. The caps seem to consist of three plastic layers, but I could be mistaken and it could just be two. Regardless, the caps do feel rather sturdy structurally, however what I'm unsure of is how durable the metallic paint on the outer part is and how prone to chipping and flaking it will be when the keyboard is in constant use. Regarding the key legends, they are very legible with the lighting on, but not so much with it off, but I could say that about any backlit keyboard. The F2088 has a permanently attached braided cable that measures 4 feet in length or around 1.22 meters, and the wrist rest attaches to the keyboard with magnets. It has a nice textured feel to it, but is made of a rather hard plastic, so you may not find it the most comfortable. If you just want something to elevate your or rest your wrists on, then it will do the job just fine. I found it to be beneficial while typing and did not have any pain while resting my wrists on it. The magnets are not super strong, so don't expect to drag the keyboard across your desk by it. I did not find these weaker magnets to be an issue though, as the wrist rest never broke contact while typing. The F2088 also has three media slash mode keys and a lighting mode slash volume knob. The media keys consist of a play pause button, a forward track button, and a backward track button. The buttons are definitely hard to read in low lighting situations. I would have liked to have seen the text and symbols on these buttons be bright white or even have them light up. To swap the knob between lighting and audio mode, simply push and hold it down for two seconds. You'll know you're in lighting mode if the knob lights up. In addition to 19 lighting modes, the F2088 comes with three lighting presets as well, one for each mode button. You can also make your own presets and assign it to one of these buttons. To make a preset, simply push and hold one of the mode buttons for three seconds. The entire keyboard will go dark and the lighting knob will start blinking. After that, push the keys you want lit up and then press one of the M buttons to set and confirm. Want to go back to factory default? Press function and escape keys for two seconds. Speaking of lighting, the F2088 is described as a rainbow backlit keyboard, and that there are many colors of lights. What it isn't is RGB or even ARGB. All the light colors for each switch are preset and static. While the brightness level has 12 steps of adjustment, and while there are 19 preset lighting modes plus 3 customizable ones, you cannot change the lighting color of the keys. Most mechanical keyboards at the F2088's price range that I saw have pretty much the same kind of lighting setup, a rainbow of some sort with various lighting modes. If you want a keyboard that is both mechanical and has fully customizable lighting, you're going to have to spend more money. I will say this. I like the blinking, numb, caps, and scroll lock lights that indicate when you've reached the highest or lowest brightness level or fastest or slowest lighting speed level. I like how the lighting reflects off the metallic paint on the keycaps. In all honesty, I at first didn't think I'd like the lighting scheme, but it has grown on me during my use. It's a nice design element that can be fully turned off if undesired. Finally, the Aula F2088 has 104 key anti-ghosting and both 6 key and N key rollover capabilities. Also, you can supposedly create macros. By default, the keyboard has 6 key rollover, but by pressing function plus scroll lock, you can change it to N key rollover. If you want to go back to 6 key, press function plus print screen. As far as I could tell, there's no indicator telling you which form of rollover you are in, so I don't know how helpful this is. You can also supposedly create macros using the function key with this keyboard. Unfortunately, there's zero instructions on how to do this. You might have to go to the Aula website and download their software and drivers to do so, but from a review I read, the driver software caused conflicts for the user and they still couldn't create macros. You're probably better off just using the standard Windows driver for USB keyboards with the F2088 and forget about making macros altogether. I myself don't really do macros, so it's not a concern for me, but if you're someone who does, then you'll probably want to get a keyboard from a brand that is well known for this feature. I think that's about it for the F2088's features. So how was it typing on and gaming with it? I'm not going to lie, it took some getting used to typing on a keyboard with round keys. I'm used to standard keycaps, so sometimes I'd miss a key or accidentally push two keys at once. However, it really only took a few hours to get used to these different shaped caps, and when I did, my mistakes reduced and I found myself enjoying the typing experience. There's definitely a lot of travel distance for each keystroke, which according to the Amazon product listing is 4mm, and there is a keystroke force of 60 grams, give or take. To put that in perspective, my Corsair K70 RGB Pro with Cherry MX red switches has a travel distance of 2mm and an actuation force of 45 grams. While I definitely like the tactile bump when typing on the Aula F2088, the sound of each key being pressed is a bit aggressive to me, and I think I prefer more of a Cherry MX brown style switch which retains the tactile bump, but the clicking noise is at a lower volume level. 
While the letter and number keys are pretty solid feeling when typing, the larger keys, like the shift and spacebar, seem to be a bit wobbly. Really though, all the switches and stems are rather loose, and I think it's more pronounced on the larger keys, even though they have stabilizers, because of the added mass. The spacebar in particular feels like it's either going to break or just fall off, even though the keycap is solidly installed. I think this just speaks to more of the quality of the keyboard, or lack thereof, and how loose the individual switches and stems are. While testing the F2088, not only did I use it to type, but also play games. I mostly played WWE 2K22, which is a two hands on the keyboard game, and I played the Elder Scrolls Online, focusing mostly on PvP, which is a much twitchier experience. I'm happy to report using the F2088 to game has been a fine experience, and I don't think there was any noticeable input lag when pressing the button and then seeing the action on screen. My main issue during play, again, had to do with accuracy and pushing the wrong keys or fat fingering multiple keys. As with typing, I overcame this issue the more I used the keyboard during play. Overall, I've had no issues of note while using the Aula F2088 these past couple of weeks. It worked the moment I plugged it into my PC. It was even fun discovering what the function key does in conjunction with the F row keys. For instance, function plus F2 brings up Windows Search and function plus F3 brings up the calculator app. Again though, it would have been nice to have all this functionality information listed within the instruction booklet rather than finding it later on the Amazon product page. Aula, if you need a tech writer, call me. Instead of asking and answering whether or not you should buy the F2088, I'm going to ask and answer who do I think this product is for, and maybe that will help you decide if this keyboard is for you. To me, the F2088 is for someone who doesn't have a lot of money but wants a mechanical keyboard with lighting. Or it's for parents who want to get a young gamer a fun looking and functional keyboard without spending too much money. Or it's for a typist who enjoys loud clicky keyboards that have a retro vibe and fun lighting that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Who this product is not for are discerning keyboard aficionados, people with large peripheral budgets, and definitely not for people who need to type a lot at work in a quiet, shared office setting. I will say this though, if you are a parent and your kid has a gaming PC in their room, get this keyboard for them. There's no way with how loud this is they'll be able to play any keyboard intensive games past bedtime late at night without you knowing about it. Ultimately, the Aula F2088 is very inexpensive and is a you get what you pay for product. And this works for every aspect of it, from the kind of switches it has, which are not given, to the kind of lighting it has, which while customizable is not really true RGB, to the fact that the product webpage is not even fully built and the instruction booklet is sorely lacking on instructions for certain functions. Regardless of all that, it's been damn fun to type on. And that's all I have to say about the Aula F2088 keyboard. It's inexpensive, easy to use, and has a fairly unique look when compared to other keyboards out there. What do you think of the F2088? Would you buy such an inexpensive peripheral, or would you save your money for a more expensive keyboard, and if so, which brand? If you want to keep costs down, is there another inexpensive mechanical keyboard with lighting you might suggest? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, hit that like button, and share any questions or comments you might have. You can show your support for the channel by getting subscribed, and don't forget to turn on notifications if you do get subscribed so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why not check out some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth, and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.